it works by reversing the polarity of hydrogen in body cells from negative to positive. Positively charged water is lethal to microbes, and the human body is 70% water. High quality colloidal silver also powerfully increases electrical conductivity in the body, and does so more effectively than salt, making it ideal for use while rifing. It disables viruses by lethally binding to their sulfur-bearing glycoprotein cell receptors. Back to contents, 184, all colloidal silvers will work against bacteria and fungi. But because viruses are a great deal smaller, many commercial and almost all homemade colloidal silvers nanoparticles are too big to fit and bind to viral cell receptors. For that job, you need silver nanoparticles that are less than 10 nanometers in size. HAADF images reveal the interaction of silver particles, 3 to 7 nanometers, with the HIV-1 virus. A. Silver nanoparticles bound to the HIV-1 virus appears evenly spaced white dots. B. Dark spots mark the GP120 glycoprotein receptors by which HIV-1 binds to cell walls. When silver parks on these receptors, the virus is prevented from using them to bind to body cell walls. HIV-1 eradication has been achieved in three days. Most colloidal silvers on the market today have nanoparticles ranging in size from 20 to 100 nanometers, making them useless against viral infections. Sub-10 nanometers colloidal silvers are available to buy, but they're more expensive. The frequencies for such sub-10 nanometers colloidal silver, and gold, nanoparticles are in the Spooky2 database. But Spooky2 also enables you to make physical sub-10 nanometers colloidal silver quickly and easily. Here's how. First, search for and load colloidal silver generate CUST. This set contains the following frequencies and custom dwells, 1000 equals 1800, 10,000 equals 1800, the 2 equals 1800 entries are custom dwells of 1800 seconds. This is 30 minutes, so this set will an hour to complete. Back to contents, 185. Then make the following settings in the green program options pane, wave equals square, duty cycle equals 95%, amplitude equals 8, select inverse plus sync. If you intend to make colloidal silver on a regular basis, it's a good idea to save the program as a preset. To see how to do this, please check out pages 70 to 74. Here's what you need, and how to go about it. 2x BNC to alligator clips cables, left. 2x.9999 silver rods wires electrodes. 4 ounces of distilled or double distilled water. 1x clean clay glass jar. 1x capped glass bottle for storage. 1. Connect the BNC cables to both outs. 2. Connect each red clip to a silver rod. 3. Wrap tape around the black clips. 4. Pour the water into the jar. 5. Stun the rods in the jar, not touching. Now load your Spooky2 program and make all the settings in the additional notes, highlighted in yellow above, then open the channel and click Start. And that's it. Silver Rods, Start Page Search List. Back to Contents, 186, Clark Zappa, Before Spooky2. Only the well upholstered could afford to play with rife therapy. If you weren't loaded, your only alternative was the zapper. Invented by the wonderful and humane Dr. Hugh de Clark, the schematics and instructions to build this at home using widely available inexpensive electronic components were given away freely. So Spooky 2 stands in exalted company. Since those days, a whole new industry has sprung up around zappers. There are some very good ones and there are some not so good ones. And virtually all of them cost more than a spooky to rig. At its most basic, the original Clark Zappa used one frequency, 30,000 Hz and it killed everything you pointed it at. So how can one single frequency possibly do this? The answer lies in the settings Dr. Clark chose. Because her device had to be battery powered, she was limited to an amplitude of 9 volts. She chose a square wave because she wanted as many odd harmonics, both higher and lower, as possible. Her real genius lay in specifying a 100% positive offset because pushing a square wave like this makes it produces a back to contents, 
huge spread of harmonic frequencies, from 0 Hz up into the megahertz range, all of them spaced 60,000 Hz apart. Later, another Zappa frequency was developed, 2500 Hz. When used with the same settings, this produces a spread of harmonics that are 5000 Hz apart. Many Zappa users believe that this lower frequency is more effective for problems in hollow organs and body cavities. Both versions are now in the Spooky2 database. We've also added a dual version that uses the two outs to transmit both frequencies at the same time. But why stop there? A second version of this for remote use incorporates Spectrum 2, making live frequency health for pathogens and parasites. Zapping is still most effectively done in contact mode, although Dr. Pankaj Mishra has kindly provided very useful remote versions, since the last frequency transmitted in contact mode Zapper sets is always 0 Hz for 21 minutes, we've decided to remove it, so these sets now take 63 minutes. But you should use the 21 minutes save to relax and give your body a chance to get organized to deal with cleanup. Then you can help out by running a detox program. If you haven't tried zapping, you should because it's very effective. And it's still the best way to kill a tapeworm safely. 187, Pests and Molds, my own infonal environmental experiments with Spooky2 and the Spectrum Sweeps have given me some pretty astonishing results so far. It all started at the end of summer 2013 with a black mold on my natural wood and tiled floors. My home is the driest place I've ever lived in, so finding this was a shock. The mold was sticky and couldn't be either swept or vacuumed, both bad ideas anyway. So the only way to deal with it was to get down on hands and knees to physically dislodge it, then very carefully clear one tiny area at a time. Because I'm spinally disabled, this was out of the question for me, so I had to find another solution. I took a sample of the mold and put it in tape, then inserted it into my homemade DNA holder attached to an older UDB1108S generator I was using at that time. I then ran the two-part CAFL fungus and mold set in an endless loop. It took a month to six weeks, but eventually that black mold turned grey, which I took to mean that it was dead. A couple of weeks later, a correspondent whose home was infested with springtails wrote to me at my delusional insects website. She didn't have spooky, but she did have a commercial rife machine. So I told her how to set it up for remote, use a dead insect as the remote transmission DNA back to contents, sample, then transmit a frequency set that had been reported by another correspondent to drive columbola out of the body. It worked, her home was cleared of columbola. Shortly after the release of the spooky spectrum sweep, I noticed one morning that I had large black ants in an unused bedroom, about 50 to 60 of them, all coming up from under the floor. So I decided that I'd try the same trick. I killed one, put it in a paper tape wrap, then ran the spooky spectrum sweep nonstop. The numbers dropped dramatically almost immediately, and within a week they were all gone. I also noticed that my fresh organic produce was developing molds very quickly. So I did the same with two different types, one blue, one white. No more molds grow on my fruit and veggies now. Another escapade was with hordes of red ants in my kitchen. A dual remote 5M ran the converge sweep on two corpses, and they were all gone in three days. After that, I had yet another ant infestation by a different species. Again, I dealt with it using Spooky2, and they all disappeared from my kitchen within five minutes this time. Since then, nothing. How does it work? Well, just like us, insects have bacterial and fungal symbionts in their gut to help them digest food. The sweep kills these very quickly, and suddenly the pests are starving to death in the midst of plenty. There have also been reports of spooky to being used successfully to eradicate fleas. The spooky spectrum sweep wasn't used in this case, but the CAFL set for fleas. I found this interesting because it means that insects for which a frequency set exists can be killed in the environment. Since there are frequencies for bird mites in the database, this is good news for those infested both personally and environmentally with these dreadful pests, it means that adults in the home will die at the same time as emergent young in the skin. 
and because there are also frequencies for dust mites, dermatophagoids, it's also good news for asthma and allergy sufferers because it's a non-toxic way to quickly eradicate dust mites in the home, simply by putting a few samples of sweepings in the remote. Unfortunately, Spooky 2 is unlikely to be able to solve gardening problems. Outdoor infestations are far more likely to be composed of insects from many different gene pools, so only those genetically related to the transmission insect will be affected. If you have insect or mold infestation problems, please give this a try and let me know how you get on. Back to contents, things to try, 189, how the universe works, if you want to get the most out of Spooky 2, it's essential that you understand one very basic thing, energy. And in order to do that, you have to be prepared to completely discard your present beliefs about reality and the nature of the universe. Because things are not what they seem to be. Right now, you probably believe that the world you live in is solid. And it certainly seems that way, if you bump into a coffee table, you'll hurt your shin and hop around the room in pain. The coffee table is matter, and so are you. But what is matter? Matter is made up of molecules. And molecules are made up of elemental atoms. The nature of those elemental atoms, and the way they're joined together, determines the type of matter you're dealing with. Here's an illustration of the difference between atoms and molecules. The top row of spheres are single atoms of oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. Single atoms are called elements. Below them are simple molecules that are made up from those atoms, O2 is the type of oxygen we need to breathe, and it's made from two single oxygen atoms. Next is carbon dioxide, which we exhale. That's made from two atoms of oxygen that are bonded with one atom of carbon. The final molecule is water, made from two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Back to contents. 190, these are all very simple molecules. Two are gases, and the third is a liquid. Now let's look at a more complex molecule. This is a molecule of heroin. It's made from atoms of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. The solid links between the atoms in the illustration don't actually exist, they're simply used in models of molecules to show how each atom is bound to its neighbors. This method of modeling is called stick and ball. As molecules go, heroin is fairly straightforward. But there are a great many others that are far more complex than this. When you look at this molecule, you can see that it actually consists of one other thing besides its constituent atoms. Empty space. In fact, it's more empty space than it is atoms. Yet heroin isn't a gas, and it isn't a liquid, it's a solid a solid that's mostly made up of empty space. Okay, but it's still got a whole bunch of atoms in there, and they must be what give heroin its apparent solidity. So let's examine a single atom and see what it's made from. We'll pick carbon, since diamonds are made from this, and they're one of the hardest and most solid things on Earth. Back to contents 191, the nucleus in the center is composed of neutrons and protons that are tightly packed together. The rest of our carbon atom is six electrons, all orbiting the nucleus very rapidly. Every type of elemental atom has a different number of protons, neutrons, and orbiting electrons. You'll notice that protons all have a positive electrical charge, and electrons all have a negative charge. Neutrons, as their name suggests, carry no electrical charge, and are neutral. But, just like a molecule, an atom is once again mostly empty space. And when you start to probe even deeper into the structure of neutrons, protons, and electrons, you find that they're composed of even smaller subatomic particles. Interesting, but not terribly exciting so far. Now let me show you something that will shock you, it certainly shocked me when I first found it out. Let's gather together every single molecule that exists in the observable universe. We'll split all those molecules into their constituent atoms, removing all the empty space. Now we'll make a necklace of all those single atoms end to end. How long do you think that necklace would be? It would be the same length as the Earth's orbit around the Sun, 600 million miles. Back to contents, 192, if you think that's amazing, Let's go further now and remove the empty space in all those atoms, 
so we're only left with real solid material. And then we'll roll all these solid leftovers up into a ball. How big do you think that ball would be? Get ready for this, all the atoms in the observable universe, with all their empty space removed and compressed into a single ball, would be the size of one single pea. Solid matter is an illusion. Matter is energy. And energy is movement from one state to another and back again. This movement of energy is called vibration, or oscillation. And it's the mind-boggling speed at which this oscillation occurs that gives energy its appearance of solidity. Think of a propeller on an airplane. When it's stopped, it's two or three distinct single blades. When it's moving, it looks like a semi-solid disk. If you could build an engine that was capable of turning the propeller faster than the speed of light, the semi-solid disk of the propeller would become solid, and you could reach out and touch it without harm. At this speed, linear time breaks down, and the individual blades are now in all their possible positions at the exact same instant. In other words, what were originally positions in time have now become positions in space. So now we've identified three interrelated aspects of energy that relate to its manifestation as matter, and they're not just the building blocks of the universe we're all part of, they're also the foundation stones of life therapy. They are speed, space, and time, and we'll look at them in the next section. And we'll see how the combinations of these three variables explain the infinite multiplicity we experience all around us. Back to contents, 193 speed, Space and time, speed is a function of space and time. When you take a leisurely stroll, you're moving through 5 miles of space in 1 hour of time, 5 miles per hour. When light takes a stroll, it moves through almost 671 million miles of space in 1 hour of time, 670,616,629 miles per hour. When something vibrates, or oscillates, it's energy moving through space and time. The difference is that the distance through space is almost infinitesimally small, and the time taken for the journey varies with whatever's doing the vibrating. Another difference is that vibration is always a journey from A to Z and back again, it's never in one single direction. To simplify things, let's call this journey from A to Z and back again a state change. Where energy is concerned, this state change is from positive to negative and back again, and as energy undergoes it, its amplitude, or power, changes. The speed at which this state change happens isn't measured in miles per hour, instead, we measure it by finding out how often it happens in a given time. This is called frequency. Everything in the universe, from an elemental atom to a star, has its own unique frequency. And the reason for this is the different number of protons, neutrons, and electrons that make up each elemental atom. But there's more. When you take elemental atoms and make a molecule from them, that molecule now assumes its own unique frequency. This happens every time you move one level up the scale of complexity. So the frequency of an elemental atom of oxygen is different from the frequency of the oxygen you can breathe, two atoms making up a molecule, and both are also different from the frequency of water, two elemental atoms of hydrogen bonded with one elemental atom of oxygen. So frequency is a measurement of how fast energy moves through one single state change in a given time. This used to be called cycles per second, CPS, but it's now called hertz, hertz. But there's another very important attribute of energy we haven't looked at yet. Amplitude is a measure of how strong or powerful the energy is, and it changes throughout every state change. The change can be orderly or chaotic. Chaotic energy change is called noise. Here, we need only deal with orderly change, and we'll do so in the next section. Back to contents, 194, how RIFE works, depending on what it's being used for, RIFE therapy works in a number of different ways. Perhaps the most common use for frequencies is to kill pathogens, and the best description of how that process works that I've ever heard comes from John, imagine a cowboy with a whip. He brings the whip back, then forward. When the sinusoidal energy wave traveling down the leather reaches the end, it must change direction very quickly. When it does, there is a loud crack as the speed of the tip exceeds the speed of sound. It is only when the direction changes that the energy is expended. 
This is a close analogy to why only the peaks and troughs of a waveform create the output frequencies. These are the points in the wave where the voltage and fields change direction. Technically, it can be explained as conservation of momentum. Momentum is a vector that has direction. Momentum will not turn corners, so some of it is expelled as energy. This principle explains how whiplash injuries sustained in car crashes can be so physically devastating. So now, here's the unsuspecting pathogen, minding its own business, busy making your life miserable, and buzzing along at its own natural frequency. Out of the blue, it now finds itself vibrating with much greater force because you've just transmitted its own natural frequency into your body by cracking the spooky two whip repeatedly. Adding two identical frequencies to each other greatly increases the energy in the target system, just as two ocean waves become bigger and more powerful when they can join as one. But your overlaying waveform now controls how those conjoined energies behave. If you've chosen a wave with abrupt direction changes in energy, the rapid and repeated whip cracks will cause electrical state changes that can damage, disable, or devitalize the pathogen. Back to contents 195, some frequency sets are specifically designed to disable specific life systems, cell wall components, or functions, so that a pathogen can no longer reproduce, take in sustenance, or even move. So it will quickly die. For detox, the repeated application of energy serves to bump pollutants out of cells and tissues to where they can enter the blood or lymph and be removed by the liver and kidneys. So it works on pretty much the same principles as pathogen killing, except that its result is the mechanical movement of materials foreign to the body. For healing, the process is completely different and works on the principle of frequency entrainment. Take two grandfather clocks and stand them against the same wall. Now set their pendulums swinging out of sync with each other. Within a few days, both pendulums will have come back into perfect sync with each other, and will remain that way until they're disturbed again. That's entrainment. Another example is a little more mysterious and is seen only in girls' boarding schools and university dorms. At the start of the term, the girls' natural cycles are all out of sync with each other. Within a few months, they will all have synchronized to within a couple of days of each other. That's also entrainment. So if you take the frequencies of a healthy liver, or a robust immune system, and you transmit them into a body where these are not so wonderful, within a few days frequency entrainment will have taken place, and things will start looking much better. Some experienced RIFE researchers also maintain that since life itself is frequency, the simple act of transmitting beneficial frequencies into the body, any beneficial frequencies, will act to wake up the immune system, remind it of its function, and set it to work again properly. Back to contents, 196, the golden rule of rifing, any living thing that lives in or on you, that consumes your energy or resources, and that confers no benefit upon you in exchange, is a parasite. This includes insects, fungi, bacteria, and viruses. It may surprise you to learn that, with the possible exception of viruses, all parasites themselves have parasites. Viruses and spirit chats can parasitize bacteria. Fungi can parasitize larger fungi. They can also host viruses, bacteria, and insects. And insects can harbor many different parasites internally and on the surface of their bodies. Entirely understandably, Insect infestation sufferers wish to be rid of their pests the moment they get their hands on a rife system. I did this myself, and it brought me a world of nightmare and suffering. When you kill hundreds of thousands of large parasites like mites, large by comparison with bacteria, you're leaving all their internal and external parasites alive. When the insect bodies decompose, all those living fungi, bacteria, and viruses are released into your bloodstream and now you're in big trouble. Since you've just killed their hosts of choice, you will have to take their place. You've just given your already overburdened immune system a few million extra headaches to deal with. So the rule when rifing is this, work from smallest to largest. This can also be stated as, work from the inside to the outside, from the things contained to the container itself. If you proceed like this, you won't end up in the awful trouble that I did, 
because when you finally get to kill your biggest parasites, you will already have killed everything they might have unleashed. Back to Contents 197, Appendix A, Terrain, when you're dealing with a serious condition, it's a very good idea to start by preparing your body for the war you're about to wage. This treatment plan was devised by Johann Stegmann as part of the original Morgulans protocol. However, its use is also recommended for anyone preparing to tackle cancers, Lyme, or any other non-trivial illness. By completing this first, you will remove metals, toxins, pollutants, and some common parasites, all of which can impede your progress unless they're dealt with first. You will also ensure that your excretory system is prepared for the onslaught to come, and that your blood and lymph are cleansed and functional. All timings here are given for a single XM generator using a square wave with a dwell multiplier of 0.33. Run programs consecutively with 4 to 24 hour breaks in between if required. Best used with a spooky remote VLL Bio North. Settings, use TW, healing or DH, killing healing, click either one to go there. Settings changes are indicated by the blue text settings within a program. Back to contents. Step 1, Metals and Chemicals, Program 1, Remove Metals, Mercury Toxicity VCAFL, Heavy Metal Toxicity, XTRA, Run this program non-stop for 40 hours. Next, Program 2, Remove Chemical Materials, Detox Pesticide, XTRA Detox Fluoride, XTRA Run this program non-stop for 24 hours. Next, Step 2, System Detox. Program 1, remove systemic toxins, detox toxic proteins, XTRA, detox toxins elimination 1 XTRA, run this program non-stop for 8 hours. Next, Program 2, remove systemic toxins, detox toxins elimination 2 and 1 half, XTRA detox toxins elimination 2 and 2 halves, XTRA run this program non-stop for 24 hours. Next, Program 3, Remove intestinal toxins, detox 1 toxins in the intestines, CAFL, run this program non-stop for 8 hours. Next, 198, program 4, remove systemic toxins, detox 4 toxins throughout the body, CAFL run this program non-stop for 8 hours. Next, step 3, organ system support, program 1, remove parasites, Restore normal liver function, liver IPROV, liver 2PROV, liver flukes, CAFL, liver function balance, XTRA, run this program non-stop for 16 hours. Next, program 2, restore normal kidney function, kidney function balance 1 half XTRA kidney function balance 2 halves, XTRA run this program non-stop for 16 hours. Next, program 3. Restore normal kidney function, kidney insufficiency, CAFL, run this program non-stop for 8 hours. Next, Program 4, Remove blood toxins and pathogens, lymphangitis, CAFL streptococcus pyogens, CAFL settings, spectrum percent 0.02. Run this program non-stop for 8 hours. Next, back to contents, Program 5, Remove kidney liver toxins, Detox 3 toxins in the kidneys and liver, PROV settings, spectrum percent 0. Run this program non-stop for 8 hours. Next, program 6, remove intestinal parasites, detox 2 parasites in the intestines, CAFL settings, spectrum percent 0.02. Run this program non-stop for 8 hours. Next, program 7, remove lymph toxins, Restore normal function, lymphs and detox 1 half, PROV lymphs and detox 2 halves, PROV settings, spectrum percent 0. Run this program non-stop for 16 hours. Next, program 8, restore normal lymph function, lymph support, CAFL, run this program non-stop for 8 hours. This completes the terrain preparation. Please note that all program timings are the minimums recommended so don't worry if you overrun any of them. If you suffer with liver or kidney problems, you should consider doubling the time allotted for these programs. 199, Appendix B, Spectrum Story, 
If you're aware of the history of rifing, you'll have heard of the legendary Rife Hoyland Sweep. Normally performed using a 3.3 MHz or 3.1 MHz radio carrier wave and a plasma tube, this 4-hour sweep is reputed to kill all pathogens. By inputting a large audio frequency range into the carrier, a great many sidebands are created that ostensibly hit the MORs of all pathogenic organisms. You can see a graphical representation of this process here, scroll down to the blue image near the bottom of the page. You'll see that the most powerful frequency is the 3.3 MHz carrier, which has no therapeutic value and no function other than to act as transport for the audio frequencies. You'll also see that the subharmonics to the left, and the higher harmonics to the right of the carrier all diminish in power as they get further away from the carrier frequency. It's important to be aware that these sidebands are depicted logarithmically rather than linearly. The effect of this is to make them look more powerful to the uneducated eye than they actually are. Since the design and mechanics of this sweep are based on examinations of some of Dr. Reif's original machines, and on incomplete and sometimes cryptic documentation and reminiscences reputedly made by him and some of his collaborators, we decided to look at the mathematics and science rather than the history and conjecture. This is not the place to go into details, but we will say that what we found made it clear that the Rife Hoyland sweep is flawed, and whole areas capable of vastly improving its efficacy had never, to our knowledge, been explored. So we decided to start again, with a blank sheet of paper. And one single frequency. Because we knew that if we could do what we needed to do with just one frequency, we could extend the principles to sweeps. And we did. The result is nothing short of a rife revolution. We call it spectrum. It's an apt name because it's a bit like using mathematical prisms to split each frequency into up to 1024 subharmonics and higher harmonics. It needs no useless energy devouring carrier wave. And, best of all, the sidebands it creates, back to contents, 200, are all equal power, no matter how distant from the center frequency, another world first. The implications of using spectrum on a single static frequency are astonishing enough, but when you apply it to a frequency sweep, it really comes into its own, and the sky is truly the limit. So we sat down and designed the sweep that we believe the Rife Hoyland sweep could, and should, have been. Because our sweep doesn't need radio carrier wave technology, it can be used in contact, remote, or plasma mode. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty. First, some explanations, then we'll show you how to use spectrum effectively. This is the first composite image of the Spooky 2 settings, and the oscilloscope readings that proved we were on the right track. At this point, we were experimenting with a square wave. The center frequency used here was 10,000 Hz-10 kHz. We specified four, back to contents, 201, sub-waves, or wavelets, and a spectrum value of 100%. Across the bottom of the image, you can see the oscilloscope readings of the different frequency clusters this produced in the 0 to 20 kHz range. Now, here's what happens when you increase the number of subwaves from 4 to 100, spike spectrum, OOLI, LM kHz, RET, R4 hours, R SCUR, R RARE, R -R -P, P, wave BEM length ratio percent. RC0 to 100, AR, ILL 100, RR, U, 102, RR, RR, RRF R fry, RR, RRMM, RR 16, a follow out all, R spike, R inverse plus sync, biofeedback scan, and pull, BPM HRV GALV, RV, BPM RV, HRV RV, GALV, 4, 0%, UM, 20Q, we're still using a center frequency of 10,000 Hz and a plain square wave, but now take a look at the number of frequencies produced. At this point, we knew we were getting somewhere. But how far could we push it? The answer surprised us. Back to contents, 202, we used 256 subwaves for this torture test. Normally, this would be quite a bit lower to allow for extended subwaves taking up twice the sample points of the center frequency. And there must also be sufficient resolution to accommodate the reduced waveform, 
If a lower spectrum value is used, then a higher subwave count is possible. But this composite image clearly shows that Spooky2 and Spectrum can now easily do exactly what a plasma machine does. Except that Spectrum's sidebands are more uniform across the entire range, and stronger. But we still weren't happy. Notice the difference in height of most of the frequencies. We went back and took another look at our mathematical prisms, and discovered a way to tweak them to work with subhertz accuracy on sine waves instead of square waves. We'd successfully produced the range of sidebands we needed, without any fall-off in amplitude with distance from the center frequency. But now we needed to see what our altered prisms could do with sine waves, while comparing like with like. Back to contents, 203, so we input parameters for the fabled Rifoy land sweep. And this is what Spooky2 produced, the center frequency is the Rifoy land carrier, 3.3 MHz. We wanted frequency spacing of 25 kHz, so we divided 3.3 MHz by 25 kHz to give us the, the number of subwaves needed, 132. And we applied a spectrum value of 100%. Now our frequency spectrum is much more uniform in power, from 0 to 6.6 .6 MHz, with no typical plasma fall-off in amplitude. But remember, we control the width of the frequency spectrum and the number of bands. So we altered one setting. 20.0, eh MHz, unregistered trademark HI 50% I measurement 5, it's J, simply by changing the spectrum value from 100% to 50%, we now output only frequencies in the range from 1.65 MHz to 4.95 MHz, 3.3 MHz plus or minus 50%. This means that all our power is much more focused in a narrower band. And you can see the hugely positive effect this has on the uniformity of frequency amplitudes. Another world first. Back to contents, 204, everything you've seen so far is using single static frequencies. But what happens when you input a sweep? The answer is, just about everything. A sweep from 3.3 MHz to 3.325 MHz will hit all frequencies. If we produce frequencies ranging from 1 MHz to 2 MHz, we'll hit the octal subharmonics of all viruses. The generally accepted tolerance for frequencies to be effective is plus 0.025%. To fall inside this limit, our smallest distance between each frequency here needs to be 825 Hz. This is achieved by using a center frequency of 1.5 MHz, 128 subwaves, and a spectrum value of 33%. See how almost all the generator's energy is focused on the selected band, making the frequencies more powerful? The awesome power of spectrum cannot be understated. Spooky2 now has the ability of transmit up to 1024 frequencies simultaneously, each as high as 5 MHz. And you can tailor the frequency range as well as the number of harmonics you wish to output. This is true multiple simultaneous output, not high-speed digital signal or packet switching. Using the settings above, a very slow sweep from 1.5 MHz to 1.5078125 MHz will hit the MORs of all known pathogens. Which brings us nicely to a sweep that will hit the MORs of all pathogens, known and unknown. Back to contents 205, first, here's our initial version of it using a square wave, once again, the frequencies are not uniform in power. We should explain at this point that this is because the odd harmonics in square waves interfere with signal strength smoothing. Now let's see the sine wave version, all the amplitudes here are uniform, and there are far less power wasting harmonics above our end of range target of 3.2 MHz. But despite this, we still weren't happy with it. Because there are 64 frequencies being swept, and the output voltage of the new Spooky 2XM generators is 20 volts. This means that each frequency is allocated an average of just 0.3 volts. So we moved it up to the next level and built a new sweep algorithm that achieves exactly the same results using 16 frequencies instead of 64. And here's what we called the spooky remote sweep, back to contents, 
206, R2.0, 1.0, J O zero J I I I I I J I I I I I zero point zero one point zero two point zero three point zero four point zero five point zero BSW megahertz. Now the average frequency voltage has shot up to one point two five volts, delivering four times more spectrum power. But that's only half the story, because we also engineered our new algorithm to produce matching octal harmonics at exactly the same time. For example. When the frequency is 1,604,000 Hz, its octal harmonic of 3,208,000 Hz is also being transmitted. This technique is known to be much more effective than fundamental frequencies alone. Best of all though, it also means that the total voltage applied to every MOR is actually 2.5 volts, half of it powering the harmonic. This sweep uses the cancer BX virus frequency as its center, and the original spooky remote sweep was made up of six one-hour sweeps designed to run in remote mode for a total runtime of 24 hours. However, the six-hour single runtime made it impractical for contact use, that's why we called it the spooky remote sweep. Incredibly, within a few days of its release, we'd already found a way to make this 24-hour sweep run in a little over an hour by increasing the number of wave cycle multiples from 16 to 96, without any lessening of pathogen exposure times. We called this version the Spectrum Sweep, and we updated Spooky 2's database specially to make it available. But, as usual, development continued to try to make our sweep the ultimate pathogen killer. It culminated in another special database release that featured the very special Spooky Spectrum Sweep. Back to contents, 207, transmitting through an additional Spooky remote on out 2 or one remote connected to a spooky boost cable, this adds a second smaller sweep that, when added to the main sweep, saturates the entire frequency range occupied by viruses and larger pathogens. This second sweep is added above in red. Even when run without the second spooky remote, this is still the most efficient pathogen killing sweep we know of. The finishing touch was to re-engineer our spectrum technology so it could create simultaneous ascending and descending sweeps from the same pair of frequencies. The new spooky converge sweep also uses an additional spooky remote connected to out 2, or a single remote with a spooky boost cable. Bottom line, these spectrum sweeps overwhelm all pathogens with frequencies, amplitudes, and application durations that meet or exceed all the original requirements laid down by Dr. Royal Raymond Reif. Although Spooky 2 is packed to bursting with forward-facing technology and new thinking, the Spooky team is most proud of our newest addition, Spectrum. Without it, the extraordinary Spooky sweeps just wouldn't be possible. For us, Spectrum is the main event, the real power, the star of the Spooky 2 show and our coder extraordinaire John White considers it to be the pinnacle of his career so far. We agree. Now we better explain how to use it. Back to contents, 208, the basics. Frequencies on either side of a set center frequency, or pair of frequencies expressed as a sweep, can be created. The spread of frequencies that will be produced is called the spectrum. The size of this spectrum is set by entering a value in the percent spectrum field. This determines how far above and below the center frequency will be covered by the spectrum, it's a percentage of the center frequency. The spacing, or distance, between the spectrum frequency bands is governed by the number of subwaves, or the wave cycle multiplier, to give it its technical name. The formula, where, F equals center frequency S equals spectrum. Percent W equals wave cycle multiplier then, spacing equals, fs, slash, 100 W, examples, center frec, hertz, wave cycle multiplier spectrum, percent rec band, hertz, frex bar, February 20th 1800-1200, October 20th 1800-1220, 1010 1550. 1100 100 2010 10000 October 20 8000 to 120 200 back to contents 209 appendix C making waves spooky 2 generates 12 different waveforms here's what they 
slash slash backslash b backslash i backslash 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 slash slash sign useful for healing with a gentle rise and fall in energy triangle smooth constant power rise and drop off mainly experimental jiu y square normally used to kill pathogens with almost instant rises to full power aaaaaav pyvvvvw damped sinusoidal used by dr rife in the 30s very powerful h bomb square world first square version back to contents lily compressed sign with built-in pulsing r and what they can do first the plain unaltered waves sawtooth a smooth rise in power then an abrupt drop useful for healing inverted sawtooth powerful killer with an almost instant power rise one fin i m n n n n uliel j l damped square world first extrapolation of dr rife stamped sinusoidal world first a very powerful new sign spooky 2 offers two additional waveforms from the custom waves menu bxby and square harmonic these are designed to be used without any changes and no frequency addition or modulation should be performed on them so none will be shown on the following pages 210 now here are the new waveforms generated by adding a second frequency that's three times the first sign add f1 to f2 f2 equals 3x f1 triangle add f1 to f2 f2 equals 3x f1 h bomb sq add f1 to f2 f2 equals 3x f1 square add f1 to f2 f2 equals 3x f1 sawtooth add f1 to f2 f2 equals 3x f1 inv saw add f1 to f2 f2 equals 3x f1 damped sin Add F1 to F2 damped SQ. Add F1 to F2. F2 equals 3x F1. F2 equals 3x F1. H bomb sin. Add F1 to F2. F2 equals 3x F1. Lily. Add F1 to F2. F2 equals 3x F1. Back to contents. 211. These are the waveforms that result from adding a frequency that's 11 times the first, the Holland 11th harmonic effect. Sign, add F1 to F2, F2 equals 11x F1. Square, add F1 to F2, F2 equals 11x F1. Sawtooth, add F1 to F2, F2 equals 11x F1. INV saw, add F1 to F2, F2 equals 11x F1. Triangle, add F1 to F2, F2 equals 11x F1. Damped sin, add F1 to F2. F2 equals 11x F1. Damped SQ. Add F1 to F2. F2 equals 11x F1. H bomb sin. Add F1 to F2. F2 equals 11x F1. H bomb SQ. Add F1 to F2. F2 equals 11x F1. Lily. Add F1 to F2. F2 equals 11x F1. Back to contents. 212 double side band. DSB. Amplitude modulation, this adds up and lower harmonics. Frequency 2 is 3 times the first, sign, mod F2 using F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. Triangle, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. H bomb SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. Square, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. Sawtooth, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. INV saw, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. Damped sin, mod F2 WF1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. Damped SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB. F2 equals 3x F1. H bomb sin, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 3x F1. Lily, mod F1 to F2, F2 equals 11x F1. Back to contents, 213, DSB amplitude modulation again, 
this time frequency 2 is frequency 1's 11th harmonic, the Holland effect via DSB AM, sine, mod F2 using F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, square, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, sawtooth, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, INV saw, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, triangle, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, damped sin, mod F2 WF1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, damped SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, H bond sin, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, H bomb SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM DSB, F2 equals 11x F1, Lily, mod F1 to F2, F2 equals 11x F1, back to contents, 214 single side band, SSB, AM adds powerful upper harmonics, frequency 1 is multiplied by frequency 2's third harmonic, sine, mod F2 using F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, triangle, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, H bomb SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, square, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, sawtooth, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, INV saw, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, damped sin, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, damped SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, H bomb sin, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, Lily, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 3x F1, back to contents, 215, finally, SSB AM again with frequency 2 multiplied by frequency 1's 11th harmonic, the Holland effect via SSB AM, sine, mod F2 using F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, triangle, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, H bomb SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, square, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, sawtooth, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, INV saw, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, damped sin, mod F2 WF1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, damped SQ, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, H bomb sin, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, Lily, mod F2 with F1, AM SSB, F2 equals 11x F1, back to contents, 216, Appendix D, Serial Numbers, when the Spooky 2-5M generator was first launched back in January 2014, the auto-sync function triggered by the selection of inverse plus single spike plus sync wasn't incorporated in the firmware because these features hadn't yet been developed by John White. This was rectified about a fortnight later. However, this means that the first batch of generators built must have their outputs manually synchronized. We have now identified the range of serial numbers involved, PN2414001, PN2414081, these XMs have no auto-sync function. PN2414082, PN2414365, if the revision NO is 2.85, auto-sync is built in. If not, the generator must be manually synced. Back to contents, 217, my thanks go to. Although my name appears on the front of this guide, 
the knowledge it contains comes from many sources, without whom it could never have been written. Inevitably, it will contain errors, which are mine alone, and omissions, which you can help correct by letting me know what I've missed so I can include it next time. Your comments are also welcome. You will have noticed that there is very little in this guide about using Spooky Pulse. And thereby hangs a tale. Essentially, I haven't had the time to even plug mine in, never mind try using it. And because I can't write with any authority about something I haven't experienced personally, I would feel like a fraud if I attempted it here, where it's so important to so many people. Luckily, John White has now agreed to write a brand new manual for Spooky Pulse as soon as our present hardware development phase is done. As usual, I will be translating it into English. It will be available soon. We apologize to all our users for the long wait. So thank you to John White, for vision and passion, Echo Lee, for decency and goodness, Johan and Tania Stegman, for seeds and fruits, the team, Argirios Argyropoulos, for enthusiasm and constancy, Keith Body, for wisdom and example, Gwen Burley, for integrity and will, Jadran Dargan, for insight and empathy, John M. Kane, for devotion and courage, Witold Paulowski, for knowledge and willingness, Linda Ray, for foresight and zeal. Brian Yamamoto, for kindness and dedication, Synergy 7, for being the YouTube Spooky 2 Lone Ranger, Peter Kulik, for pointing us at foot tubs, yes, still coming soon, Spooky 2 Forum. Members, for commitment and support, you, dear Spooky 2 user, for your trust and your spirit, back to contents, 218, precautions for users, HD if you suffer from impaired liver or kidney functions, Please use caution when using Spooky 2. 4 hours frequency generation systems should never be used while pregnant. HI please do not operate the Spooky 2 frequency generation system while driving or using dangerous machinery. HD please keep your Spooky 2 frequency generation system out of the reach of children. 4 hours if you feel nauseous, faint, dizzy or have flu-like symptoms or headaches after exposures to Spooky 2's frequencies, please, drink lots of pure water and shorten your future Spooky 2 session times appropriately. 4 hours because no electricity is passed into the body when using the Spooky 2 frequency generation system to broadcast frequencies via non-local space, remote mode, this system should have no ill effect on the electrical or mechanical components of cardiac pacemakers or internal defibrillators. But, as always when using frequencies, please proceed with care and caution. HD if you do suffer with heart problems, or wear a pacemaker or other electrical implant, you should never attach electrodes to the Spooky2 system. Please use Spooky2's remote mode only. HD in general, it's best to experiment with Spooky 2 before about 5 p.m. because the excitation effects of frequencies on human cells can affect sleep. However, depending on the nature of your experimentation, Spooky 2 can be run overnight if desired. HD Finally, when experimenting with Spooky 2 or any other frequency generation system, proper hydration will produce better results. As a general rule, it's best to drink 4 to 8 pints of pure water daily, half of it before noon. On behalf of all the people who assisted in the development of Spooky 2, we wish you all a long and healthy life. John White and David Book, April 2014, Back to Contents 219, Legal Notice and Disclaimer, The Spooky 2 Software and Frequency Generation System is not approved by the FDA as a medical device. It is intended for use as an experimental electronic device only. It is not intended for the diagnosis, prevention, cure, treatment, or mitigation of any disease or illness in human beings. Neither is it designed or intended to affect the function or structure of any human body system. I, John White, and I, David Book, make no medical claims whatsoever for the Spooky 2 frequency generation system. If you have a problem with your health, please consult a licensed healthcare professional. In the US, you can legally use frequency systems like Spooky2 for testing, energy balancing, life extension, and relaxation. You can experiment using frequencies on bacterial cultures, laboratory animals, and yourself. For what it's worth, 
you still have a legal right to self-medicate under the Ninth Amendment of the United States Constitution. In Germany and South Africa, as well as some other nations, frequency devices are legally licensed as medical instruments. Please note that neither I, John White, nor any of my associates involved in the design and development of this system, are responsible whatsoever for the use, abuse, or misuse, intentionally or unintentionally, of the spooky two frequency generation system or any of its component parts due to any circumstances beyond our reasonable control. In any case, I, John White, or any of my associates, shall have no other liability. By using the spooky two frequency generation system, you, the user, understand and accept that you have no expectation of curing any ailment. You also understand that possible negative physical and or mental effects, unknown to John White or his associates, might result from the use of the spooky two frequency generation system. Moreover, you intend to undertake only responsible experimentation, and you voluntarily accept all responsibility for the use and application of all frequencies generated by the Spooky2 system. Furthermore, you agree that you will not hold John White or Associates responsible for any consequences, whether harmful or otherwise, that may occur as a result of using the Spooky2 frequency generation system. Back to Contents, 220, Spooky2 Software License, Although the source code is copyright John White, this software is free, and has been written for the greater benefit and knowledge of all mankind. You are actively encouraged to pass it on freely to everyone you know, as long as it's accompanied by this document. Back to Contents, 221.